advisory committee meeting of November 26th. Um, we're missing two members. Do we have a quorum? Yeah, you would have a quorum of. We're fine. We had nine, so we're good. Okay, we're good. We're good. All right. <clears throat> well, do we have to do something official to open the public hearing? If you want to, you can say I'm opening the public okay. hearing. <laughs> I'm opening the public hearing of the Zoning Advisory Committee. You have a motion to open the public hearing if it's public hearing. Yeah, you have to move. Yeah, I'm opening a motion to open the public hearing. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'll make, I'd like to make a motion to open up the public hearing. Great. Second? Second? <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Yeah. Any exceptions? So. Uh, if any members of the public would like to give a, um, ideas, suggestions to the Zoning Advisory Committee, uh, I'd invite you to come forward and sit at the table. You're the first one. <coughs> Hi, Hello. Kathy Sherry. I'm here from REC Hopkinton or Paul Mastriani Properties. And one of the things that we were interested in or wanted to propose was um, REC Hopkinton owns a parcel of land up on South Street, across from 80 South Street where the town hall was temporarily located. It's an undeveloped parcel right now, currently within the industrial A zoning. Um, we have an interest in trying to uh, develop a car wash and self-storage facility on that land, neither of which of those uses are currently permitted by right or by special permit. Um, given the location where it is in, in kind of an industrial area, um, we wanted to see if that would be something that um, would be amenable. The car wash is, a car wash is currently um, approved with a special permit in the business district, and we do own some property down there, but felt that wouldn't be the best location for a car wash. Um, so felt that this is about 10 acres of land, we'd be able to su potentially support those two uses if it was <coughs> Um, amenable to the town and whatever. So, so that that would be the proposal. It was for, uh, excuse me, basically to amend the bylaws to be permitted by right in the IA district, a car wash facility, which would include a drive-through car wash facility, automated or self-service, as well as a self-storage facility for residential and commercial customers. So that's kind of the scope of what we were looking for. Okay, thank you. Okay. So uh, I brought this proposal in front of the Chamber of Commerce at our Board of Directors meeting at the last time, mm -hmm. and the Chamber voted to support this initiative. Great. We'll definitely put it on our work list to discuss. Are there any other members of the public who would like to make suggestions? Uh, hi everyone, Gary Trendle, 31 Chamberlain Street, speaking as a member of the public, not as a member or any representation of the planning board. Um, I've got a couple of things that I just want to throw out there. Um, and the first is, I think in many ways, a reaction to seeing a couple of um, open space subdivisions that were proposed that didn't move forward. Um, and they ended up um, doing some other alternative developments. So one of them over on Saddle Hill, they withdrew their proposal. Uh, ended up doing an A and R, um, which I, I think overall is less desirable for the town than an open space subdivision. Uh, and then secondly, even um, on the uh, Hopkinton REC property between Chamberlain and Wayland Road, um, you know, that was originally an open space proposal as well, and, and they ended up going to a, using an alternate um, pathway to get that through. But um, I guess what what I'm concerned about is that there doesn't appear to be a big enough differential or, 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 or you know the benefit or differential between an open space subdivision um, and a uh, and either a traditional subdivision or an a and r and so one of the things that i'd like to propose is that the group consider um, increasing the minimum lot requirements for um, a, uh, a a standard uh, building lot in the um, in the, uh, the residential uh, zoning um, I think that, that that does a couple of things. One, it potentially uh, increases the incentives for developers to consider an open space, an open space subdivision. 
Um, and then secondly, I think it, it really is, is probably in, in line um, with the, the character of Hopkinton, uh, in particular in those, those um, residential um, zoning sections. So something that I'd like the group to consider. Um, and then the second one, uh, I'm not even sure quite how to address this or what can be done, but um, you know, the, the, the parcel of land that the YMCA is on, I think there's some risk for us as a town. Um, and I don't recall how that's exactly zoned. I apologize, I didn't, didn't do more research before this. Um, so as a math, I'll probably take a look, Carol. Um, but um, I think that's a, a really great parcel of land in town. Um, and what concerns me is that at some point in the future, um, if that parcel were to change hands, then that could be developed into something that is very, very vastly different from what it is now. Um, and so I just would like to explore if there's some way that we could propose or that you could propose um, zoning changes to that, to that parcel or to that area that would um, help protect um, you know, it's either its usage or the, the, the context of, of, of the benefits that it brings to our, our town uh, today. It's zone agricultural. Zone agricultural. And what parcel is this we're talking about? Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, when you're saying open space subdivision, is that a definition by our bylaws in there? Yes. Yes, it is. It is an actual definition. Open space and landscape preservation development. So is it cluster development, basically? So you have the buildings together and then a lot of open space? I'm not familiar with the right off the bat. I'll look it up. Yes. <coughs> it's, it's a smaller building lot and... With common area. With common with area, yeah. Open space that's either deeded to a... There's conservation restriction put on the open space, mm -hmm. and it's either held by an outside entity or sometimes it's held, I believe, by the Landowners Association. As a condominium? Yes. Association. So, so so you're talking yeah. cluster at this point. You're not talking just that's well, 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 He's talking open space. But you're talking cluster. And, and I, and I say, is this a form of cluster development by a bylaw? No, not really. No, no. They're different. How are they different? How are they different? I just want to understand this better. Well, open spaces, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, open spaces still have to have, a, there's still a minimum um, lot size. Now that, that was going to be my question. Instead of, instead of doing it so that if somebody wants to do a standard to increase it, why don't we just say that they can make the lot sizes smaller if you do an open space, giving more open space, and making more open space available, and making it more uh, palatable for somebody to do an open space rather than to to make it punitive to do the other way, try and do what 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 zoning is for you. Reward either, them. Reward, re reward them. them for doing it. So it's, but, but zoning is just as, as we mentioned before, you either encourage or discourage. And so basically, you're not encouraging them to do open space. Really, you're just pun uh, penalizing anybody that wants to just do. What if somebody just wanted to put up one house or something? Then all of a sudden, you 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 handcuff them from just putting up their yep. one house or changing their lots. That, that's a, that's a fair point. Um, I think, but you know, also from a secondary objective of trying to preserve the talent that we have now, um, I think a, a larger uh, lot size would, would help do that. Um, you know, again, specific to you know, I mean, I mean, there's there's certainly areas of our town that that, that, that do allow denser housing, and I think that's fine. But um, in those those other areas that, that do not, I'd like to see them. Um, well, I think, if, if I may do the chair, I think agriculture is already up to, we're already up to an acre and a half already. We were an acre. I know, I know in, in, up in my pride, in town, we're at, I think, 60,000 60, square feet in agricultural. So it says in the agricultural district for the garden, um, for the landscape development, it says 30,000 square feet is the mini, minimum area. In, in what section? In the landscape. The open space and landscape oh, preservation okay. developments. Yeah, just those general ones. So it allows for a, a smaller lot so size. Does it have more? Is it 50% open space? Uh, so they have, there's a certain equation that they use to determine the number of lots, which then determines the open space amount. Um, I'll read it further. 
kind of. And you're, you're saying it differs from a cluster development. We don't have a cluster development, but we don't have a definition of that in our zoning bylaws. Uh, but, yeah. but it's it's similar. Yeah, yeah. Some, it's some it's the same Same idea. Okay, so the YMCA pa parcel, you're, you're just proposing we look into some way of preserving that should it change hands. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Like an overlay? I'm not sure. Okay. How, <laughs> legally, how do you do this? Right, yeah, right. You, you can't <laughs> right. attack one person. <laughs> so. No, no I, 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 I realize yeah. that. I, I just. Yeah. That, I, I, that's why he's throwing it to us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> perspective. Conservation area. So you have some luck there, right? Isn't there's a there's a conservation piece there? If it's near what? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, and I, like I said, I apologize. I probably should have come with a, a more uh, a more robust or well thought out proposal. Mm -hmm. But I think from an intent perspective, I just think that it's worth looking at some of these bigger parcels of land. Um, and if, if they're of value to the town in their current format, then maybe there's some ways that we can creatively. Have you um, ever talked to the YMCA at all? Have you um, ever talked to the, the, the leader over there? Not specifically about that, no. I have. Yeah, so let's get some ideas about what he's doing, right? Well, I mean, uh, as a former chair of the, of the board and currently on the Hoppington Family Outdoor Center board. Uh, I mean, talking with the CEO, Rick McPherson, yeah. there is absolutely no intent to do anything different with that parcel. I mean, it's a, it's a huge value. It's as valuable a resource to the YMCA as it is to the community. And um, there's just, there's no, there's no reason nor in intent to do anything differently with that parcel. So, so that's fantastic. So then they wouldn't have any objection to some other protections that would prevent it from changing uses somewhere a long ways in the future. I, I don't know that they would or they wouldn't. I can't, I can't speak for them. Right. But there's no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a valuable resource to the Y as is. Okay. Just as a point of information, the town did a study a number of years ago, the East, East Hopkinton study. Uh, it took in the Western Nurseries property. It also, I believe, took in the Y section just because that portion of town was so undeveloped at that time and looking at what could possibly go on there and, and what the impacts would be. So that might be a good place to, to start. Historically moment. research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public? Hello. Hi, Amy Roderbush, 54 Grove Street. I just wanted to piggyback a little bit on what Gary said about um, large parcels that are currently open space but um, are not preserved because they're being used for something like, so there's the, the YMCA, like he mentioned, there's the Laborers Day training camp, and then there's the golf course too. I just thought it would be good to look at the zoning on those and just make sure, you know, we never know what could happen tomorrow if something could go out of business. Uh, not, not that anything's going to happen to those, but to make sure they're zoned properly for the next thing that might come in. Um, you know, is the golf course zoned for other types of recreation or, or will it just become houses, you know, or not the golf, I don't mean to say specifically the golf course, but any large parcel that's currently open but is not preserved to be open space. Okay. Anyone else? Just here to listen? <laughs> okay, great. So, uh, let's see. Then today we are going to, I'm sorry, does there have to be a formal closing of the public? Yeah, if you want a yeah. motion to close the public close hearing. Public hearing. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any opposed? <coughs> Extensions? Okay. We'll close the public hearing. That does not mean that we won't entertain other thoughts if they come up. <laughs> All right, so today we were going to discuss the maximum size of banners over Main Street and the um, also potentially, if we have time, the mobile vendors and whether or not it belongs in this committee. And then we can review in the packet the whole work for the year. 
or at least the next period of time. And, um, and that's all we need to do today other than improve our minutes and schedule new meetings, all right? So, for the maximum size of banners over Main Street, do you want to give a little bit of overview and um, yeah, what the proposal uh, is? A couple of years ago, we changed the um, several aspects of the uh, sign by law. So we couldn't get that about every two or three years. But one of the things was um, we modified this number, or maybe we just put a number on here of 75 square feet. And um, all the banners that we've always put up there have been four feet by 45 feet, which actually comes out to 180 square feet. And uh, I guess we just, uh, that's something we just missed and um, it, and it just came up for the, uh, is it that we call it the, the, the stroll? stroll the, the stroll on December 1st, the Chamber of Commerce is sponsoring the stroll uh, all through downtown and they wanted to put up a banner and so this banner had to be uh, uh, like 18 inches by 45 feet in order to make it into the, uh, the size requirements. So it doesn't read as well as, uh, as every other banner that we've had over the last uh, 40 years. So basically, it's just to make it in line with uh, what has been happening. Okay. So I propose that we change it to from 75 square feet to 180 square feet, which is the things that we have downstairs in the basement already for the marathon and for uh, um, family day and some other things that we that are already built up. John, would it make sense to just have the banner of that size in that location this is making the whole rule no no that's what it is now if you want to go to C, it says the banners over main street okay, okay. it's it's if, if we go to 210 179 c it's specific to that spot now granted we may have to visit this again in three years when the okay. downtown changes and there are no poles so we might have right. to <laughs> I thought of that too. <laughs> so yeah, this is really only another temporary change. So it also uh, says that the banners must be approved by the selectmen. Right. So just because the size is, is better, we've we've got the selectmen to provide oversight to which banners are appropriate. You said 175 square feet? I just 180 square feet. 180 40, 80 square feet. Uh, uh, 45 feet by four feet high. Any other comments? Actually, the only other thing I, I was wondering if people would think about is right now it's 14 days. Um, we were trying to give a little more notice for this, especially for this, uh, this, uh, what do you call it, crawl, the stroll. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the stroll, because uh, sometimes two weeks may not be enough. So if it's a family day, and then, you know, again, when we were doing the, uh, the 300th, I think we actually had it up there for much longer for the, for the 300th. Um, and I don't know if anybody would uh, um, consider something longer than 14 days, whether it be 21 days or 30 days or something. Sure. Yeah, I, th I think, a, again, a month could make sense, but subject to selectman review as to what the appropriate length of time would be. I'm with him. <laughs> well, I just didn't want to, I just, I just didn't want to restrict it again so that so, so somebody would have to come back to us and wait a year again before it's fixed. Well, doesn't G exclude all the town signs? Well, these aren't, these necessarily wouldn't be town signs. No, I, I yeah. know those wouldn't be, but yeah. um, the signs that are all yeah, downstairs would all be town signs, right? So they would be excluded from the bylaw? Yeah, provisions of the right. article does not apply to government signs. Where's this one? It's I think when we last... Well, that's not a temporary sign, though. See, I, I'm just looking at the temporary signs. I don't know. If it does, does, does that apply? My memory... I know. That's what I'm looking at. It says the whole article. So... Mm, okay. I, I assume it would apply to everything. But things like the marathon sign aren't government signs. No, I, I realize yeah. that. And the, yeah, know, and the family it, day and family day. Well, it's quasi. I guess it's the yeah. Right, but that 
When we discussed before, my memory is that government signs are stop signs and yield signs and road signs, not public announcement signs. Well, those Just because it's held in the basement. Well, right. Well, I'll those are specifically excluded, though. So maybe I'm not understanding why we took a look at G. Is the worry that the signs downstairs are government signs and so they run afoul of something? No, I, Did I, I, miss something? I would interpret those. And again, the government signs are exempt from the bylaw. So the, the town, as a town, could put up a sign and look at it, and pretty much any size, any place, they're exempt. Um, the thing that the committee went on uh, considers on the way to the football game down in Ashland on last Thursday, half the sign was in the street. And this is a skinny little man. It's only a foot and a half by a so a big event with wind conditions like we had on Thursday could potentially pose as a safety hazard to passing motorists and everybody else. Nobody's going to get killed by a banner falling on the head, obviously. But we have a lot of other things now. We have electronic signage. We have tons of things we could be doing that <coughs> would absolutely be no problem safety-wise to anybody. I really question personally why we even have the banners. And as John said, in two or three years, all the polls are going. They're going to have no way to attach them anyway. But th this is up to you folks. We are. But government signs, you know, if this was the selectman's banner, it can go up there without permission from anybody. But also, because it's in the zoning bylaw, a person who wanted to have a bigger banner could go to the Board of Appeals, get a special permit, because the Board of Appeals initially modified any of the conditions in the zoning bylaw. So, we want a bigger one, we want it for longer, the Board of Appeals gives you. It requires a public hearing. Yes. Um, I just had a question. Are, are, are banners allowed anywhere other than Main Street by the bylaws? There may be one banner for each business establishment, maybe displayed on the premises of a business. Yeah, so maybe like the Muffin House smaller temporary ones. Temporary opening banner. Yeah. So okay. they have to I guess it was just not across the street, it doesn't look like it. Okay. The large banner we're talking about is, is specifically banners across Main Street. Is banners That's what we're talking about now. Okay. I, I guess this is just just one person's opinion, but um, I personally don't find over Main Street to be a very good place for that banner. Um, I find that, that you know, the reality is that because it's on a hill, there's pedestrians, there's cars, there's people walking back and forth. Um, to me, it's not a great place. And I, in contrast, and I never even, I drive through there all the time and I never even see the banners, to be honest. Um, whereas I contrast that to Holliston where I always see their banners. And I think part of that is because they're placed in a location that's a flat piece of road where there's not as much to look at around it. So um, I, I personally like like the idea of banners, I think it's a good way to showcase things. I just, I, I personally think that there probably might be better locations for banners um, than on Main Street uh, on a on a um, on a hill uh, in a downtown environment. So, if anything, I would consider actually expanding that to potentially allow for banners um, elsewhere in town, which would also alleviate the problem of when downtown is revitalized and not being poles anymore. There might be someplace else where people could use banners if, if it was deemed appropriate by the selectman. And you know, if we continue to have this, if authorized by the board of selectmen, etc., um, we can say over Main Street or another street as appropriate or as deemed appropriate by the board of selectmen. Well, well, right now the, the reason why they're there is the only place that there. Are Poles, yeah. Right opposed to each other, and, and they've been there for many years. Um, and I don't know if there's another place in town that there's, there is something like that off the top. Yeah. But if there is, yeah. uh, maybe, you know, so. now I'm going to go around and drive around every time I look. I'm just doing I know. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think it makes sense to have it Please. expanded? You know, if we're proposing wording changes, might as well make. You get a point thing. because I do understand what you're saying. Going into Hollister, you see them. Yeah. You know, and, and you're right. Coming up with that one, it, it, it's not the it really is the spot, but you know, it's the only one we got. You know. 
Okay, I have a question for Georgia. The way that this is worded right now, since the, um, the statement about if authorized by the Board of Selectmen and subject to such limitations as it shall require, does that mean that they can, if we change this to a month, for instance, for duration, and 180 square feet for area, does that mean that this Board of Selectmen can still limit it to 14 days? Yeah. Or, 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 even or even less. Or even less. Or yeah. in, in such, yeah. It's subject to their is, limitation. Right, right. But just, just as, as a stated. And I, I think I, keeping it as broad as it is is actually a good. Hmm? I think keeping it as broad as it is, kind of in that first sentence, allows them to cover those other two. Okay, good. So that's why I, you know, I don't propose 30 days and 180 square feet. Like to make that formal motion for change? Can I just, my only worry with 100 square feet, I get 45 times four, and that seems perfect, but 180 square feet is also shorter and much wider, and I'm aware that it's up to the selectman's discretion. Oh, no, no, but you're also, yeah, there's, there's yeah. also a minimum, this, you have. Is that in the feet. bylaw? Yeah, no, that's, it's state law. You can't have the height of the D. Yeah, I'm sure the fire right. truck, no matter what, right. fire okay. department. So you, that's why it's, that's why it's, that's why All right, so, so there's no worry about it getting too far right. this way? Yes, and, and they'd be breaking. Okay. Well, I said that Trump out was. So uh, I'd, like to make, I'd like to make a, a uh, motion to modify section 210.179 temp uh, temporary signs. Subsection C to the sex bandage shall not be displayed for more than 30 days from 14 days and may not exceed 180 square feet from 75 square feet in the area. Second. All in favor of put, putting this forward to the planning board. Oh, okay, further discussion. Okay, further discussion. <laughs> I always forget that because it seems like we've already discussed it. Right, but, but it's I never, but no, I the formal. The formal. <laughs> okay, no further discussion. Do, do we want to add an ex, um, expansion of the location as well? Because cool. it's uh, displayed over Main Street or other location as appropriate, or I, I'm not, I don't know what the appropriate wording would be. Okay, I'll, take, I'll, I'll accept the friendly amendment. Okay, so would you like days? to read the. Days. Read the um, the uh, well, part C. You know, if, you as did, to how if we just delete the over Main Street oh, from yeah. there. Okay, good point. Yeah, so I'll, I have temporary banners may be displayed over streets. Public roadways. May be Public displayed ways, <laughs> if authorized by the board of selectmen and subject to such limitations as. It shall require such banners shall not be displayed for more than 30 days and may not exceed 180 square feet in area. Do we need over public roadways? That's the only thing that this was, I think. No, no, but I mean, can it run along? If so desired, and if the wind is going to blow it off, could it run alongside a roadway if that were? Does it have to be over a roadway? Can you hang it on the 10 foot walls? I mean, this is what I'm thinking. With Gary's idea, my first thought is put the banner by the tennis court. I noticed the tennis court signs a heck of a lot more than I noticed the banner. I avoid downtown because of the traffic, and I don't see the banners at all. Well, they already can do that, can't they? They're already up on that. But that's not these huge banners. I'm saying it, the long banners. Can you go? I, I, all I'm saying is do they have to go across a road, these long selectmen-approved banners? Does the Board of Selectmen control the tennis courts? No. No, I, I'm not saying they have to hang. I'm saying in that section there. I just did a quick Google car drive. The Board of Selectmen also doesn't control the telephone poles, I assume. But there are two telephone poles that look to line up pretty nicely and perfectly by the tennis courts. And that's a section of town with all of the schools there. Add in the Marathon School where everybody drives through. It's pretty flat at that point. All I'm saying is it seems like a good location. It doesn't have to be on the tennis court. Fences. I don't know how we get approval right, for the ones that hang on the By eliminating the words over Main Street, it just says banners. If, right. if the selectmen approve it, they could go anywhere. Georgia's amendment, I think, said over public roadways. Yeah. I'm just asking whether we even need right. over that, public that's, roadways. That's, 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 I, I oh, I. Okay. Temporary banners may be displayed if authorized by the Board of Selectmen, such limitations as it shall require. 
I think that's a shall not be displayed for more than 30 days and not, may not exceed 180 square feet in area. Right. And it's over a public area. Yeah, because then that would trigger so, the Muffin House wanting to do a banner over their business. But they still have to but they still go through the board of board of selectmen says, are you kidding me? Even if it's seven by seven and it's on there. No, but that's a whole different, that's not. That's the one above it. That's what I so I just want to make sure that this this provision, because it just says temporary banners in general right now, if we were to take out over the public way, hmm. it would just say any anyone with a temporary banner has to go to the board of selectmen. If we take out that public way portion, that was hmm. my only concern. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't take that. Yeah. So it has to be what it's authorized by the board of selectmen specifically to be over a public way. Because, so they are authorizing really because yes. it's over the public okay. way. Well, yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Public way. Leave it in. So we'll keep over a public over temporary public banners way. may be displayed over public That's roadways. Yep. <laughs> okay. Good point. All right. So now we are going to be voting on do we have to, we don't have to do a motion again, do we? No, I read it, I read it again. Okay, so over public ways or over public roads for 30 days, not more than 30 days, and may not exceed 180 square feet in area. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Nope. All right. So we can pass this on to the planning board. Is the process that it goes to town council first, or it goes to planning board first and then to town council awarding? That's a good question. I'm not familiar with how Hoppington does it. Um, I'll figure it out. It goes to the planning board, board first. Okay. I, you know what? That makes sense because they'll want the finalized one. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. All right. Our next item on the agenda is mobile vendors. Do you know who this was raised by? This guy right here. This guy right here. Hello. <laughs> there you are. The mobile vendor. <clears throat> I think I know pretty much everybody, but for those that don't know me, I'm Mike Shepard. I work up in the building department. I, uh, along with Chuck, and will enforce the zoning and the building uh, laws in town. Um, probably 20 years ago, I sat on this very board. It was much smaller then, but uh, it was still called Zach. Um, <clears throat> then I became the building inspector here and uh, went to the town of Brookline as a zoning um, administrator. And after about six months there, they hired me as the building commissioner. And I was there for six years when I retired, and now I'm just living the life of leisure. Uh, <clears throat> but I've always lived in town. I always will live in town, so the town is important to me. I have no personal axe to grind on anything regarding the mobile vendors, food vendors, or anything else. I only bring it up because um, I, I was asked, um, because I, I said this potentially is going to become a problem with us for us in time. Um, <clears throat> right now, in, in town, the only mobile food vendors that I understand that we have are, are, are well-loved and, and everybody appreciates them. And they're here only because nobody said you couldn't be here. There's no laws preventing them from being here. We have Snappy Dogs now in two locations over at CVS, used to be Colella's, and down at, the, uh, down at Western Nurseries. We have a pizza guy up at Angel's Farm. Um, we have, uh, let's see, what else is there? One, at least one other. Um, the, Snappy Dogs, the pizza. What else? The ice cream vendors. Yeah, ice cream, ice cream guys, yeah. you know, they're all the same. And the problem is, with, with what we've got right now, nobody really has a problem with it. And my fear is, J.I. Ragman will come into the office one day and he's going to sell uh, sausages or something, and he wants to pack his truck down at Ice House Pond. We don't have anything that prevents that. We have no regulation that regarding these mobile food vendors. They're not like a hard piece of property like your house, your house, your house, where the building code and 
you know, covers it. Um, and it's hard for zoning to cover it because when you come up with a new zoning bylaw, what happens is all the other stuff that pre-existed is now grandfathered and it doesn't affect them anyway, so it only affects the new guys. But my fear is, um, probably uh, two months ago maybe, we had a lady come in and uh, she was a, uh, she cleaned headlights. She had a van, very similar to like the, the mobile vans you see. It's that really people, nice van. They take care of people's dogs. They come to your house, they wash the dog, da 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 da. And she said, Can I do that in your town? And I says, Well, as long as you go into private property, I suspect there's no reason why you can't do it. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to set up like on the common. I want people to see me so they can come and get their kids' headlights taken care of. So those are the kind of things going forward that are, that are potentially going to be a problem for us because it isn't going to always be just snappy dogs and the pizza guy at Angels and, and, or and the, the grilled cheese guy down at the uh, Water Fresh Farms. All things we love. But we can't just say what things we love are okay and the things we may not love may not be okay. So what happens is, and, and a lot of this was driven particularly in Brookline, because all the food trucks in the world want to be in Brookline. And, and of course you had the, the restaurants, of which is a lots of them, and you had the competition. And it was a body very similar to this. It took almost a year to come up with the regulations to regulate the food trucks. You could be here, you couldn't park overnight, you couldn't do this, these are the only places you could be, you can't park in front of somebody's private property if you're on a public way. Um, those were all the kind of things that were considered. Also, because of the mobile nature of the food trucks, is the Board of Health doesn't get involved at all. Um, the, so, at least, and I can only go back to Brookline because I was involved in it when we came up with that. Um, the, the Board of Health was probably the single most important component of the whole regulation. The Board of Selectmen was because the people were actually licensed. Um, the thing that I found really interesting is the mobile food truck industry is a big industry and they're really organized. And we actually had them come to meetings very similar to this. We had them come to one Board of Selectmen meeting in Brookline to say, you know, what they need, what they expect, what is done in other towns. So, you know, they want to be really cooperative. The problem is if we don't have anything for them when they come, we stand to be the bad guys. They say, can we say, yeah? Snappy dogs, you're okay, but sausage guy, you're not okay. We can't do that. So we need some form of regulation. So I, I wanted to bring it to Zach only because this is the kind of things you do. Again, if you decide we're not going to do anything with it, we'll just leave it the way it is. I'm okay with that. Uh, but you got to understand that when, you know, up there where we have to enforce this stuff, the signs, and the, you know, then it becomes a real issue. Potentially, it could be a real issue. And this lady with the the headlights kind of just <laughs> put it over the edge for us. She wanted to cool. pick nits. And, and uh, you know, so I was thinking, you know, essentially it's mobile food trucks. But when you think about the, this mobile vendors for everything, the, the headlights lady, the, the lady that comes take care of the dogs. My wife hired a guy to come wash our car because I never do it. So he came to the house with all his stuff and did it, a mobile car washer guy. Um, you know, the certain segments of it should be just exempt. I'm going to the private property. If I'm going to the private property for a, uh, a party, a, a graduation party, or a, and, I'm, and I'm going to your house and you're paying me, that, that probably should be exempt. It's not in the public way. It doesn't affect anything. Um, if um, a mobile food truck is, is working for, let's say, Western Nurseries. I've looked at, you know, Snappy Dogs. I kind of look the other way because I look at it as accessory to their agricultural use. Agricultural uses have a big leeway of things they can do because everybody, all of us, want them to succeed and survive. So a lot of things. So snappy dogs down there, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with CBS, but I don't see how they're helping CBS survive or not. It just happens that's where they are. That's where they started. Um, I'm not saying whether they should be there or not. I think it's fine. Everybody enjoys it. But I think without some kind of regu regulations, we potentially could have them or somebody similar on every corner. And uh, yeah, should there be a, you know, it, 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 what we did in Brookline is we, we, we laid out where we, we thought they should be, like uh, at uh, the farmer's market, for example. 
You could potentially have them up on the common. Great. We're, they're regulated. They pay some kind of small fee. Everybody knows they're there. The Board of Health makes sure they're not going to poison anybody. Everybody's fine. They make money. You buy your hot dog, everything is good. Um, maybe we should have them down at Ice House Pond. Maybe we should have them at uh, the school events. And they, they may be exempt as well. Maybe we should cut it, you know, if you got mobile food vendors and you got, you got um, just mobile vendors, a big over, overshadow thing, the head lice lady, the dog cleaning lady, the, the, uh, those kind of services, you know, probably should be exempt from any regulation. That could be written right into the bylaw. But all that being said, and I know you, the other zoning guys, God bless you, um, the, the, it probably shouldn't be a zoning bylaw, it should be a general bylaw. Very similar to the, what we did a couple of years ago over the construction equipment in somebody's backyard deal. The problem with making it a zoning bylaw is if you have, like that was, if you had construction equipment in the back lot when we passed the bylaw, when it was advertised, they grandfathered, they could have it there forever. And the same thing is true with the food vending trucks. It's not an issue, they're not beating down our door upstairs to find out where they can put them, but I think it's something, now would be the time we start to look at it, whether we do it this year or next year, I, th I, I feel something's going to be done. Would it help them? Yes. Would we get more? Probably yes. Uh, would it help with the vibrancy of the town? Yes. Um, we found in Brookline that the restaurants didn't fold because the food trucks were out there. They, you know, they, but there are a lot of things with the food trucks that people don't understand is, is they have to take care of the trash they generate. They have to be there at specific times. They have to, you know, it's all part of the regulation. And that way you got some kind of clean operation that, you know, is, is an asset to the town. And is how does, I hate to say it, nobody needs more regulation, but this may be something that needs that. But uh, that's pretty much my two cents. I'm happy to answer any questions. I, it took us a year in Brookline. And, and so, you know, this isn't something like the banner you're going to solve in 15 minutes. I, and I appreciate that. But I just, I was just thinking that there, there ought to be a dialogue style at any rate. Yes. Mike, do you have language that Brookline uses? Yeah, I think, uh, I think Georgia has it. You, you're going to find, I mean, you Google food truck regulations in Massachusetts and, you know, Bellingham has them. You know, I don't know the house, all the communities around have some kind of regulation. Right, but we, we agree, though, that this is only in the public way because Snappy Dogs is on the Cross Point property. It's not in the public way, and they're also in Western Nurseries, which is not a public well, I guess way. I, I guess I, so, I, so I, I, I just want I guess to I clarify that. I, I, think, I think on private residential property, I wouldn't have a problem with them being a, you know, you got, you're going to hire the hot dog guy come for the kids christening or something. That's, that's you and that's on your thing. But if I'm a, if I'm a, a uh, private for profit operation, mm -hmm. it might be different, like CVS and Western Nurseries. Mm -hmm. Western Nurseries could still be under the agricultural exemption, and so couldn't angels. But that's mm -hmm. mixing two things up. I mean, it's Oh yeah, that's what we do in zoning all day long. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> That's what it is. That's if we can make it work for you, we will. But I, I mean, I, in the industry I'm in, um, I get calls all the time. See that piece of parking lot there? You could yeah. make money off of selling trees, yes. yeah. Christmas trees. You know what I mean? This is the same kind of an yeah. issue. And if the person needs to pay their taxes because they're so high in Framingham, yeah. yeah, you let them sell some trees. Yeah. You know, so I. I see, a dis I see a distinction. I say it's got to be in a public way that versus privately owned property. Yeah, not I think so much, I agree. Not it's so much commercial yeah. or versus residential. Yeah. But then you also have a lot of properties that don't have big driveways, so you'd have to get sort of a clear distinction. Like if I was the rental party and I wanted a food truck at my house, they'd have to park in the street. It's, a, it's residential, no, and they can't, be, they can't be in the public way. They have to be in your property to, to avoid that regulation. So they have to be in the driveway. Yeah, if I had a public way, it would be a public. Or go put it on your front lawn. I mean, park on your front lawn. Yes? So it seems to me that this debate is you know, it's kind of moot, because whether I have a carpenter come to my house or a rug cleaner or a dog washer, it's my property, you can yeah. have whatever you want. Yeah. Exactly. 
if I want somebody to, if I allow somebody, you can't on a private residence, but on a commercial office or retail or property, it seems to me that if you have a vendor, especially a food vendor, they should comply with other, with all the planning board standards, including noise, odor, uh, and, and, uh, and those types of standards, regardless of whether they're on private property like Cross Point or private property like Western Nurseries. You still can't have a food vendor that we shouldn't allow that's, you know, has sense traveling from miles away, right? Just like we require in restaurants. Um, it seems like this is a great idea. I, I, I agree this is a great idea. To limit or to define how many, how many vendors will allow in town, how many vendors in one particular spot, um, which we may not be able to do on private property, we certainly do on public, and the size of the vehicles. I envision sometimes somebody's going to have a tandem tractor trailer with a barbecue or something set up. Huh? The Wienermobile. <laughs> the Oscar, Oscar Wendt, well, they're not exempt. Uh, I have a question, one last question. Oh, as far as the Board of Health not being, uh, not having the authority, I think that's something we can include in a general bylaw. Yeah. Right, well, to exactly. give them the authority for at least some inspection. They all have to have use of a commercial kitchen. In the case of Snappy Dogs, they use the kitchen at St. John's. Um, in the case of the pizza guy, I don't know what he does. He may have a certified. Um, and finally, do we have a meals tax? And I apologize for not knowing this. Do we have a meals tax in town? I thought we did. No, we, we, no, we don't have that. We, we thought we talked know. about it a couple years ago, but we do not. We talked about a hotel tax a couple of years ago. Yeah. So if we had a meals tax, <laughs> then it would seem that the meals tax would apply to food vendors as well. I was wondering that as well. Uh, right. Well, if we had state, one, or if we have that's state, the state's meals tax. You know, unless you want to say that we add another tax, but then so. You know, it, it, it's, uh, okay, so does the state sales tax, does the state meals tax require that these uh, mobile vendors oh, I'm sure pay a sales tax? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Based on a, a percentage of their sales. Yeah, their gross receipts. But, but I, I, I just, uh, if I can't do the chair, I, I really do appreciate you. You, you did this with Thank the um, uh, doggy daycare a couple of years ago. Yeah. And that really helped, and we brought in. We had the uh, some some owners of of, of uh, uh, good owners of Johnny Dickens come in and talk to us about what's uh, what's necessary yep. for. Uh, well, that's uh, why I say these, these vendors are, are very organized and and they're they bend over backwards to come in and speak to boards just like this about you know how they do it in other towns and what they expect because they do expect some form of regulation. We're kind of behind the we have none and and. Uh, the other entity is involved because mostly they use propane gas is the fire department. The fire department inspects the trucks, you know, annually or how often their, their license comes up for renewal to make sure that, you know, nothing's going to blow up, that they have the right fire extinguisher. The building department doesn't get to do anything because by definition they're on tires and they're not buildings. So, but, you know, our angle, at least from the Brookline side and my Part of it was from the from the, the zoning perspective because we, you know, Brookline was getting hammered with these things. They were just pulling up on Main Street and they'd line up, and, and you know, something like that's not going to happen here, I'm sure. But I, I'd rather avoid any hassle at all and just get in front of it instead of stay by, staying behind what's it. And that's why I thought I'd bring it up to you guys. Yeah. What's the license for people to go door to door? Solicitors. Okay. Eventually, right. with, with the police. Eventually, with the police. Right. Right. It feels like it's in that category. But, but, so, but I, I, I think you know, since since Zach can't do general bylaws, but maybe we should write it up as a um, zone in different yeah. in different zones, and then if and, and then at least it gives it least it gives the board of selectmen if I, if I could yeah, say yeah they decide. It's, it's you know, so, yeah, some insight on, on, on what some of the stuff is, what they're looking for, what we might need, what we might need in order to do yeah. a general bylaw. Exactly. That, you know, and, and um, the whole grandfathering thing is what, what, you know, makes it, making a zoning bylaw difficult because, you know, suddenly the people who were there the day before the day of first advertisement are grandfathered forever, and uh, if they can prove they were there. So general bylaws, I suspect the way it goes. The Board of Select may have a big role because they'll be issuing um, licenses or permits 
um, there's some potential for the town to make, you know, in Brookline, they, they made a lot of money. They went as far as licensing ice cream trucks. I don't recommend that. But, you know, I don't see ice cream trucks as being a big, a big deal. But they did in Brooklyn. Um, but, um, they didn't allow, they, Brooklyn wouldn't allow food trucks within, I think it was 300 feet or 300 yards of any public school because they were afraid the kids were going to come out and not eat in the cafeteria <laughs> or eat off the food trucks, I'm afraid. But there were those kind of things that you have to think about, um, that, that, uh, you know, which which means we probably should be thinking about mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. and, so you know. currently, ice cream trucks in Hockington don't have any kind of a license to to operate like a solicitor's li no. license or anything like no. that. They have to get uh, Mike. You had mentioned they need to get. I don't out. know how many ice cream trucks we have. Um, no, well, they come around my neighborhood every yeah. summer, but yeah. I mean. Yeah, I think the most that. annoying thing is the, the sound. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the fact. I mean, you, you know, you could add on to that what the trash looks like after they leave and that kind of well, thing. But yeah, I suppose. But, you know, true. that was a big deal with the, the mobile food trucks was the trash. and you know, Or picnic tables setting up shop. Do they yeah, park they, the truck and then put up a table and then put up an umbrella and put up yeah. chairs and then they're basically yeah. a restaurant? For the whole day, or yeah. it all those are so, things. So, you know, I deal with a lot of people who are trying to start a new business, sure. and they all start with these trucks yeah. mm -hmm. because it's easier, it's less expensive. There's no like major insurance and all this other stuff. And I just I hate to see that this gets so regulated that we don't encourage these people to try to figure out a way to get through this because it is. A gauntlet right no, I now. think I, I would I would agree. I, I think you should make it as painless as possible, but the but the, there has to be some checks and balances to the basic safety and well-being. Exactly. I, any kind of business, I would encourage it. No question about it. And and uh, but you know, there's there's public safety, and there's also you know you, you got to sit up in my chair one day, one morning, with the phone calls from some people talking about my neighbor's chickens are loose. And to give you an idea of what people complain about. So, so you know, it's, it's just, you know, <coughs> if we had something, some kind of thing on paper that not only the police, but the, the Board of Health and uh, could actually some kind of enforcement authority know you can't park your truck here. And, and that's pretty much all you need. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but it's up to you folks. You got the hard job now. Madam Chair? Yes. So this would apply to, it would have to apply to vendors, let's say, at Carnival, yes. HPTA Carnival, and any other um, community events uh, where there are vendors, right? So could they do that? Yeah. Yeah, if you hired a, if the, if the Parks and Rec hired a, the grilled cheese truck to go sell grilled cheese at the soccer games down at the new turf fields, the, those guys would have to be regulated. And part of it is, Who's, who's going to clean up after the guys, you know, and, and, and are the kids not going to get poisoned from the grilled cheese? <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't include the doghouse. Uh, that's already a town run. Plus it's fixed. Yeah, that's, that's different. Yeah. But, uh, it might so there's a lot to it. I mean, yeah, yeah. Every, everything you bring up, every point is, is an important one. No, one is less important than another. That's what makes this so difficult. Now, don't don't get me wrong. This is, this is, it, it, you probably won't resolve this by next town meeting, and, but I think it's it's worthy of having some discussion. Well, this the state must regulate those enterprises to some extent. Yeah, I correct? suspect. Yeah. Right. They get the the, the peddler's license from the state. Yeah. We yeah. talked about that. They get, the they they get a peddler's license. A peddler's okay. license. Okay. But that has nothing to do with how clean their I'm not their sure. facility is. Or yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the board of health, it, yeah. I would hope, would enforce yeah. that. But I'm not yeah. Um, Mike, you had said that um, you had provided some of the Brookline, you know, regs that you had worked out to. Yeah, yeah. Brookline. Pay, so it's about, it it's it's about a ten-page document, and, yeah. and like I say, they went so far as to include, you know, ice cream vendors. I didn't agree with that, but they found ice cream vendors to be a. It was an attachment. Big, we big deal in Brookline. I think we put Wellfleet in there too. Yeah, well, please for him. If you just bunch. Yeah. oh, I did not, I didn't see it. Newton, I'm sure had, I'm sure Newton, I'm sure Newton has them. There, a lot of the communities around us have. 
and, and eventually we will as well. I just, I'd rather get ahead of the curve than behind it, you know. And frankly, like I say, I have no problem with Snappy Dogs or, or the pizza guy up at Angel's or the grilled cheese guy at the Outpost Farms, kind of. But the, uh, <laughs> the uh, you, know, it, it, you know, at some point you're going to end up with too much and then people will start complaining. Yeah. Gary, did you have something to say? Yeah, sorry. On the uh, health inspector, I'm not sure if they win or how they inspect this stuff, but I know like at the most recent, like um, the Western Nurseries, the Blooms, Brews, mm -hmm. and yeah. the health inspector was there yeah. and was checking on those mobile vendors. So I, I, don't, I don't know quite how that's, I wouldn't assume that the health inspector is not involved in these. Yeah, no, I, yeah, and some of them, depending on where they are, I suspect they are. So that, that was a really public, publicized event. Yeah. Um, the, the guy that pulls up selling hot dogs out of, out of ISO spawn is less likely to have been. And then, and then two other points. One, uh, if, if this was a zoning bylaw, I don't know if, if public ways are included in the zoning. Yeah. The public ways are? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if, uh, if our, I mean, the, the we regulate the, land. Typically, the, the roadway is going to be the, 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 the difference between uh, one zone uh, yeah. and another zone. Yeah. So if it's the road in the middle, then it, yeah, I don't I think. I don't quite know how you would write this. This, as a, this, as is, this isn't yeah. so easy. Yeah, because you, you, you can't say this. You can do this in the agricultural district, but you can't do it in the RA yeah. district. But you can do it in the RB district. It's it's not as easy as that. Like you said, you know, in, in Brookline, they actually define specific spots. First, they ask the food vendors, "Where do you think you'd like to set up?" And then the people sat down and said, "Do we want them to set up there?" And if we do want them to set up there, what's the time frame? And they had certain spots like on, on Beacon Street where um, a vendor couldn't come to the same spot every day. They, they had to alternate, you know, so that they could kind of mix it up. But uh, the other things you got to look at, it was especially with food trucks, is, is sanitation and, and, you know, you have your hot dog and you have your soda and hopefully you go someplace else to pee. And, and a lot of these food truck vendors have toilet, you know, little porta potty thing set up. And uh, so there's that issue, rather than going in a bush or something. But it's all there. Think of it as the marathon, it's steroids. And, yeah. and uh, um, but it's, it, it's, it's something, you know, if you guys don't think it's a big deal, I'm okay with that too. But I, I just, the other body that, you know, would handle something like this. So I think uh, I'd help you out by giving you some big deal. I appreciate your you. You solved the banner thing right away. Right. Well, we had to come up with some more. Well, you broke it That's right. But, uh, yes? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go tomorrow and give Georgia some more, you know, yeah. samples of what they do out of the community. Okay. So if that's yeah, helpful great. for you. But, yeah, absolutely. It's but again, helpful. don't don't dismiss the, the food vendor consortium or the, it, it's a big club and, the, and they're very very well organized and they'd be happy to come and speak and so, you know and um, it would help you a little bit perhaps but, okay. right. it, you were, I'm sorry oh. yes. so given that there are several examples I'm sure there are great examples uh, of zoning or general bylaws that have been approved by the state in the, you know, about the state yeah. uh, why can't we use one of those as a model, or several of them, but probably one, and get this through? Because otherwise we're looking at a year and a half, right? yeah. or more before it becomes enforceable. But if, they, if they're out there, and, and they are, yeah. then we should be able to take one, you know, and craft it more specifically. Yeah, most of them have been pretty, well, offer it a pretty well vetted at this point. Yeah. Mark them up. Yeah. And you could, but it seems to me that it's something that we ought to do this year. Yeah, you could put as much much flexibility into it or not as you wanted to at that point but that might be the easier way to do it and smarter way yep okay thank you you're very welcome thank you folks for all your hard work so i wanted to um address the the point that um it's a, you know it could be easily a general bylaw and it might be better as a general bylaw. But, um, but that doesn't mean that we couldn't craft something. So how would that work from um, your Well, last year we, we did the um, uh, nuisance bylaw 
the two different versions of the nuisance bylaw. There was one a, uh, a zoning bylaw, and then there was a, um, uh, a general bylaw. Mm -hmm. um, neither of them went anywhere, but they but they were both just they were both written a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, and and Zach just sent them. Did they send them both up to planning board? No, Zach, Zach, Zach did a zoning bylaw, and yeah. then uh, but when I went to the planning board, planning board said, "No, nah, this is more of a." General bylaw. Actually, the town council said it was general bylaw. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then it went to uh, it, it came up to the board of select. Okay. The board of select and uh, decided to take no action before it got to town. Okay. On uh, some uh, good advice from some people in the audience. I would like to take a look at our full agenda for this coming year. Um, if everybody has that in front of them, the chart. Um, work program, that's what, that's what we're calling it. <laughs> so. And, yes? Oh, hi. Hi. Um, is it too late to oh, no. uh, introduce an idea? Can you open the forum? Yep, feel and free. Like, that is quite all right. Scott Richardson, uh, President of the Chamber of Commerce and local business owner in town and a recovering Zach <laughs> member. <laughs> so um, things uh, we have been thinking about um, in the industrial A and B district to try and enhance offerings and enticement to people to locate there for businesses and so on and to potentially offer additional amenities um, so I have uh, some requests for you guys to think about and discuss. Um, in industrial A and B and in the professional office district, which is the island of Liberty Mutual, um, to add educational and vocational schools, whether for profit or not for profit. Certainly if they're not for profit, they have the advantage of the Dover Amendment to aid them in approvals, but sometimes if you have to go for a special permit, that is another obstacle. Okay. I'm sorry, you said A and B and? A and B and professional office, which is the Liberty Mutual Island. Soon to, soon to be something else, hopefully. <laughs> um, Let's see, and again, have that by right, or again, a fallback would be a special permit, but right now, the bylaws are silent on that. Um, and then, there is the indoor recreational use in Industrial B, I would, but that's also by a special permit. I would request you consider that it be by right, and also be applicable to Industrial A. Indoor recreational. Indoor so recreational, like Apex. Mm -hmm. We would love to have an Apex of our own. Would we not? <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, and let's see. In A and B, uh, retail is limited to 2,000 square feet. Um, certainly we haven't had any bites at that size. Not that that doesn't mean there might be somebody out there eventually that would look to open a small store uh, or shop, but one consideration may be to increase that to say 5,000 square feet. And one thing that came up is the potential of adding an accessory retail use by right if it's part of the manufacturing process that's happening within the building or within a new uh, business that comes to town. Uh, a case in point was a uh, shoe manufacturer, um, I cannot remember the name of it. They were looking to locate in anywhere along 495 in Marlboro and other places and they basically, is it Red Hawk? Yeah, 
I knew it was a color. <laughs> so, um, but inter but they also wanted to open a retail store, kind of like Reebok. They make shoes or New Balance in Boston. They make shoes and sell shoes at their store. Um, but interestingly, all bylaws were were kind of prohibitive of that. Um, well, not all, but the towns they're working in, certainly our bylaw is, again, silent on that as well. Um, so one thought was it's an accessory retail use to the manufacturer um, or fabricator that's actually in place, mm -hmm. that, again, is an allowed use. In Industrial B, restaurants are limited to 100 seats. Whereas industrial A, they are not. Um, I would suggest if we're trying to get potentially a larger restaurant uh, in industrial B, or again, just make it less restrictive to delete the 100 seat maximum. And then in downtown business, uh, this comes up all the time, is theaters, halls, and clubs are special permit. Um, again, you're trying to enhance what's happening downtown on Main Street. Certainly having a theater hall club uh, by right would be helpful. How are we going to start it? <laughs> that's, 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 that's a different problem. But that's why it's probably a special yeah, but they still have to they still have to go through a planning board for site plan review. Right. right. Yeah, it has nothing yeah. parking has nothing to do with what we're talking about. So that's all. That was now. <laughs> <laughs> Great suggestions. Should I, should I you. write these up or you, you got know, I wrote them down. Yeah. I maybe send it to you to look it over and sure. see if I okay. got them all right. But I think I got them all Okay. Great. Great. Thank Thanks. you very much. Yeah. Right, there's still some associate positions open on the Zach. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do more damage from the outside. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Since I think it's still open for the public comment part, I have a couple things that are Please. Since I'm here. So um, there's a couple of things that, that I've been uh, mentioning to a con uh, Conservation Commission meetings that I wasn't sure it could be uh, included in zoning bylaw, but having read it again, I think it can. And there are two things. One is standard requirements for site plans. That is, what's presented on a site plan. We'll often see. The standard is that all engineering drawings are supposed to be oriented north. The top of the page is north. The second standard is, is that all engineering drawings should have a bar scale. So if that drawing is reduced or enlarged, you can still follow the scale as opposed to it just saying one inch equals 40 feet. Um, these, this could be done in, in uh, you know, the site plan standards. And um, I think defining will help whether it's in the site plan review documents or if it's in the general uh, zoning bylaw, we'll maybe get some consistency. So we're not looking at two or three different versions of plans. Title blocks are included and so forth, uh, legends, all that stuff. It's pretty standard stuff. I can come up with that. Second thing is um, a requirement uh, in, under site plan standards for construction entrances. Construction entrances are at the entrance to any project that's disturbing soil site work um, where there's construction vehicles entering and, and exiting the property. A lot of developers in town will automatically do that because it's good practice. Others don't seem to do it unless they're told to do it. And there's plenty of examples if you drive around town after a rainstorm, you'll see out of, uh, out of a site, you'll see the tracks of the sand and the mud coming off of there. A construction entrance is, um, is simply an area that's excavated down a, um, down a gravel and then backfilled with, with um, crusher run or riprap, something to uh, clean the tires off, basically. And it's not something that I see we require. I've brought it up at Conservation Commission. I, there's generally no, um, no support to put it in the wetlands 
protection bylaws. Uh, plus, it's a larger issue, because there's some things that don't come to CONCOM where it still would be important to do that. So two things, um, for the site plan standards potentially at 230, uh, 210.136.1 would be uh, requir requirements for site plan, for site plans, drawings, and requirements for construction entrances. Now, I could do those two things and submit them if that pleases the, com uh, the committee. I'm also a, 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 a what am I? An alum of Zach. And just, but I'm not recovering. As Mary said, this, we, we have spots. Yes, we do. We have open positions. I would if there's CPC and uh, Uncle Charles. And, all right. So since you guys don't meet there frequently, I'll pause. But Ted is our rep from Concord. Mm -hmm. Is there an Uncle Charles trail liaison? There's no. Oh, no, no, no. no CPC liaison? There's no. No, there aren't. There is. There is. <laughs> anyway, those are the two things, and I'd be more than happy to help either as an associate or just as a citizen. Great. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. I think that's it. I, I think we'll borrow the planning board when they make a decision on something it always says in reference to the entrance to the property that you won't carry dirt off and I can tell you on Chamberlain Street they, they did do everything yeah, it's it's so it, but oh, this it, it's all over the street they've done everything they were supposed to but there's just so this weather's just been so yeah. 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 so even in these kinds of rainstorms coming out with you know it's already six inches it should not be tracked. It's their responsibility to make a large enough entrance so that it's kept up. From a conservation commission and from a stormwater management um, concern, the issue is obvious. Rain washes that cell uh, into the cash basins along the roadways. Uh, and that's the, you know, that's the issue from a conservation and a wastewater. But even if, if I may to the chair, but we, we ran into that uh, with the town last year with. Um, uh, the snow dump area. Yeah. We just it just got so saturated that um, that's why they ended up having to use the uh, parking lot at the uh, at the little league fields um, because it was just, we had no place to do the snow dump. I, I just noticed it at my house. I'm doing was doing construction at my house, and one of the problems is if you, you can put six inches of, of compacted three quarter inch centigrade or even go to twelve inches, which should be enough, but with the rain that we've been having, it still softens it up. And to, to Carol's point, you can do everything right at this point, but this weather right now has just been horrendous. So sometimes you have to let them go to work if they have other issues. You know, if you're you know, literally, you know, day, if you're you know, going through six, 12 inches a month, maybe you're not going to think of the schedule and, and work around The ultimate goal is to have no, uh, no uh, tracking, no sand, no soil, no mud. On any public You're in your own development, it's private way. That's one. But any public way, absolutely. So, you know, just let it work out. Or you go, it blows up. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. So, in terms of our work program for the for the next six months, it's got to be more. Yes, we've got quite a few more. These are easier than the ones that we just got. Yeah, some spot. of them those, are. Those are, you know. I would, I'd like to look at some low hanging fruit that, that we can. Um, <laughs> no, that's, that's You're absolutely right. A reasonable thing to do. Those, we kick them up, they kick them yeah. up to uh, the planning board, kick them over to, yeah, you that's guys. Right. That's right. That's yeah. so, right. Um, so let's, you know, looking through the list that we have here and the li list of suggestions that we got today, um, what. What are a few that we could solve, in your opinion, in one meeting? <laughs> Anyone? We did. We did, we did one. one. <laughs> We've got one crossed off already. Yeah, let's go for a long one. How about, how about trying to figure out <laughs> the ones that should be sort of more general bylaws that we're mm -hmm. separate from the zoning bylaws? Because I, I, okay. I was the one that brought up the screen with trash cans because they go all over the place in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and they just don't leave the, you know, and it may be a general bylaw, I don't know. I know, it might be. For residential, you mean? Yeah. You want to do residential? Yeah. I, I, yeah. You won't get it. I you won't get it. your tenacity. I don't think there's any way that will ever fly. Yeah. 
Even though they're flying around. Right. We, got scared, we, we, got, we got scared away. Both Planning Board and Board of Selectmen got scared away from that nuisance bylaw last year. Um, they took trees, trails, and trash. <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you have to stay yeah. away from them. As, you said that anyway. before, but I, I, there still has got to be something that's... what. Maybe you can explain exactly what you're trying to accomplish or what the issue so is the, that you're trying to address. People put their trash cans out for trash day, mm -hmm. yeah. and they don't take them back. And then all of a sudden, they're empty barrels, and they're flying all around the neighborhood. They're rolling around the street. They're going all over the place. That's kind of a nuisance that we do, shouldn't have to live with. But if they're gone all day at work and they come home and... No, I'm talking about weeks. Oh, you're talking about weeks. Yes, yeah. it's not from a backyard. Yeah, because, yeah, because, because the clearly day. there have been storm situations oh, where, yeah. where our... Maybe, maybe, yeah. Yeah. maybe we should have a wellness check at that house then, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, right. <laughs> I have asked for that too, but it, it's, it's, it's more than just my neighborhood. It's a lot of neighborhoods. Where I used to yeah. live, um, you would get fined if you left your trash cans out for more than a day after trash day. Thank you. But it's probably a general bylaw. Probably general bylaw. I think we have them. I know I them. have been worried about being fined. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean no, no, no. Like, if I let it go 25 hours after I dragged it out, I'm suddenly panicked. So I, I don't know. I was working under the assumption well, that there were fines. Yeah. Is, there, is there a bylaw in the books that talks about trash? Honestly, this is this is. I mean, I'm curious, Ria. Are these the big new bins? They yes. blow around your neighborhood. Yes, because the people don't. Yeah, you need to tape a brick to the bottom. They don't. They don't. They don't take them off. I live the in a pretty populated and neighborhood, they're and they're not going anywhere. Oh, what? Driveway. If it's more than a day or so, it's definitely. Yeah. And it's not. A Do drive. they just leave them out there to fill them out there? They leave them out there because they're lazy. They don't bring them back and bring them behind the house or whatever. So they just they walk out and just fill them, leaving them in the street? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where they fill them? I mean, they stay in the apartment? Many of them do. Hmm. Many of them do, and it's just not attractive. It's just, it's like a... So Even I mean, if it's for two or three days, that's... Right. I mean, it's... I mean, you don't think she's no, only bylaw. Right? I think she's only bylaw. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but if they, but if it's out there for the trash people to pick up, right, right. Then, then, then it can't be screened. Because what if somebody puts it out a day early? Then now that that happens all, especially around this uh, yeah. th these these weeks holidays here, these holidays, yeah. which is like, is, it, is it Friday? Is it Saturday? Is it, is it Monday? Is it Tuesday? You know. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who park their trash cans at the end, at, on the street and they never move them back. I, I I got a hunch we have a rule about the exit. Well, uh, I can check. Okay, I mean, that seems to me, if we're going to be talking about how to do other general bylaws, language, yeah. we should sort of collect them all together. Okay. So which other ones are, are general bylaws? What was number eight? Mobile then. Number Mobile eight? Is general. general, yeah. yeah. And, and then the only the quasi one is, is the hours of operation. That, that, that one's going to get... Might be. That yeah. one is... Yeah. Well, it all depends on, on how, the, how you want to do it. If you want to do it by zone, you can be zone it. But that, that, that was of operation. It's, it's um, that's uh, general stuff. And right, but there should be guidelines for that in areas within the town. Because we've got 24 hour things going on. Yeah, I think that's more a zoning than a yeah. general by law. I don't think you can say. Well, we'll just, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 just, I'm just well, I keep talking out of turn, but I'm just saying that. It's, to me, logically. Yeah, well, okay, this is this this is why we have this is why we have a town council to figure out how to you know how to how to do all this stuff, and the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so dark sky, obviously, that's Play, here. That, that's, that's here. Yeah, that, if that's we ever want to touch it, um, <laughs> that's a long term always. The stone walls, definition of sidewalk designs and paper streets are not. Technically, zoning bylaws. Yeah, we mentioned the subdivision rules. That does not mean that we can't discuss them, but I'd like to get some clarification from Planning Board. And this is based on my discussion with Elaine and Georgia earlier and their, their so, good advice. So, that, that. so, stone walls, definition of sidewalk. Um, construction standards paper and street. paper street. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's because they're regulation more than anything. Anyhow, 
We so. were going to have someone from DPW to talk about the site. Mm -hmm. We should invite them whatever they're available got it John, this one, whoever. so but first I would like to get um, me personally I'd, I'd like to go take this back to planning board and mm -hmm. ask um, yep. because this is not technically part of mm -hmm. the ZAC definition that you know and they may well, well say yes that's great go ahead and, and do it anyhow but mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to do that before we take it further and put it on any agenda okay okay Signage. There's always stuff to talk about with signage, but um, what is that? What's that? Yeah, this one, that. this one, we need to get clarification from the person who suggested it. Um, so um, I'm going to do that offline. Okay. If I can get her to come or to write it up for suggestions, it'd be better if she came. From one of the board? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Something about the accessory family dwelling unit and it, again suggested by ZBA as well as the one that I suggested which is, which is look at all three which are very closely related and try to make sense of them so we don't have three separate bylaws. That's conversion of residential property, accessory family dwelling and duplexes because they're all very closely related. Um, well, excuse me if I may, and so, but are they, are they separate because they should be separate. You know, that's that's up to them. You know, you know just like just like we, just like we like when we were just doing the the uh, this this signage uh, going over the road. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the temporary, we had visual signs, and then the yeah. temporary signs that had their own. Sub I don't stuff. know the exact difference, but I know it's way more repetitive than it is different. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I know that. And I know that from last year's right, discussion well, during confused. Zach. Yeah, it was confusing because it seemed before, like they yeah. were all the same thing. So um, I just think that, that we need to carefully review that and, and try to make sense of it better. I think it's confusing for anybody reading the bylaws, you know, which one, which one does my mind fit under, you know? And so it would, be, it would make much more sense to have one. And it probably has just occurred over the years, of, you know, people adding on, so. Um, okay, so that's, that's, you know, of course, that's, those are definitely zoning. And solar farm screening. We're just talking about screening, and we don't touch other parts of it. That could be a relatively quick one to discuss. That people agree? Yeah, maybe? Yeah, there's just a lot of state stuff that we have to, we, 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 we walked a really fine line with that one. Yep. So, we so. Make sure that we don't, that we don't do anything. Just to so we, so we get through, through AG. If we can get it past the uh, town council, we'll be fine. But it okay. makes sense to okay, get that good. one. Okay, good. And then, all right. So. And then these, and then these new ones here. New ones. Actually. New ones. Okay, mobile vendors. That's what we've, we've determined is probably a general, but. Um, when you suggested that, Aria, that we put all the general bylaws together, does that mean that you would consider that, I mean, you're suggesting that we deal with them after we've dealt, dealt with the others? Or? Probably, because yeah. it, our purview is on it. Okay. Okay. And I'll bring up, I'll bring these up. At tomorrow's, there's a, there's a Board of Selectmen meeting tomorrow. Okay. And I'll I'll bring these these up at the end of the meeting for future agenda items to discuss. Okay. So that uh, so that they know so they don't get lost. Although I do sort of see the importance of addressing the mobile. I do too. So I, even though that it would be technically general. general bylaw, that's one that I think we should try and address prior Thanks. to the town meeting. Yeah. Unless so it'll take any any help that they can get. But, <laughs> no, but but don't get don't do it. Screw up some of the stuff that. Plenty board might expect to be seen also. All right, all right. So in terms of the mobile vendors, then I, you know, if if uh, selectmen are planning to take it out sometime soon, then you know we would defer, obviously. But, oh, I don't but know. Then I'm, not, I'm not chair, so I can't. Uh, I can't say. Oh no, I'm sorry. Well, it would it, it would still come through this board, would yeah. it not, to go to the selectmen. The um, selectmen want to do the research and the language and but no and generally it, no what general for for a general bylaw no the it would it would actually go through Norman 
and, and, and that end. Yeah, we don't. In Town Council and Elaine. Uh, that's, that's what we had to do with the, um, the nuisance bylaw, the general nuisance bylaw. Um, basically, uh, Elaine really wrote the whole thing for us. Okay. Uh, I think having sat reviewing something like that but, um, definitely makes sense, though, because it has a lot of provisions of what would be in a zoning bylaw or a site plan review that the noise uses like stuff like that. So I think the input from Zach is definitely helpful from having from the general bylaws. Maybe through, through the chair, maybe you could kind of fill that out and see yeah, how those would like us to proceed on. So, um, so I suggest that the solar farm screening be our first agenda item for next the next meeting, which we have yet to set. Hit some, of, want to hit some of these. Is we, we, yep. is he, all these can be separated. The ones that, that um, Scott has. Scott, because you know, hit. You know that's what an a la carte, one at a time, and send it up to the planning board and see which one of them. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. maybe if we hit like one or two of these, depending on the And I think they're they're very very concise and good suggestions mm -hmm. in terms of you know encouraging. You know, yeah, the, I, I mean, business. I always thought that the reason why the the special permit was a requirement for some of the things they talked about is because they were in areas that really didn't meet this minimum standard for design. So for example, if you did put halls and recreational things in downtown Hockington, there's no parking. How does that work? We've already got people fighting for parking spaces right now, and it's not necessarily parking within the site. That, that was the actually, on his list, that was the one that I flagged in my own head as being, um, no. that's probably not the easy one. Right. <laughs> yeah, but the some of the other ones. ones. Yeah, there's got to be some, some of the other easier. ones. So, but, but, seem but a lot. again, like the, I think there's some there's the educational right here. The educational and, that sounds a great and educational, idea. that one's an easy Indoor one. recreational use, for instance. That isn't it? No, that's we need a challenge. challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. But, but, but again, you know, that's what we're here to discuss. So right. we'll, we'll definitely do that. Yeah. Okay. The indoor we recreation. Remember, we had that about that was about five or six years ago. The, the a company wanted to come and do the indoor. Um, right. Paris. So you were, oh, you were there too. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, she was there. She was there. So that was like the big tent, that the lights, cool. and the this and the. I mean, that was like a silo with a so, huge. So so there's much more to on. this. That's why you want the special permit because then you can sort of identify whether or not that specific thing is really going to be right in that location. Mm -hmm. That was a great spot for it, right on the highway. It, it was, but that was also a loud indoor recreation activity. Mm -hmm. Oh, good We're point. talking about the, I think it was parachuting, wasn't it? It was uh, skydiving. Yeah, yeah. And I, I have one of those proposals in front of me, and my landlord said, no, we're not going to do that. I mean, like, because there's just too many issues with it. <laughs> it's like, I mean, you really have to be in a field somewhere where no one lives. But that, that was a good location for it because it did back up to the highway and there were no not, not the neighbors. But to, to Main subject Street, an entire yeah. zone to it without that kind of oversight mm -hmm. as point. things come up is, yeah. is I, I think, mean, hard. It, it definitely needs a special permit for a lot of reasons. But, you know, I mean, we're friendly special permits. I, I don't think that the special permit process is as big of an issue here in Hockington as it is in other towns, perhaps. Um, but limits retail to 2,000 square feet, make it 5,000 square feet, that really doesn't accomplish anything. Um, it, I mean, it's really when you, when you bring retail up to 30,000 square feet that you really get into the category of, you know, here's a destination, it's different. That, that was one of the things. And then the other thing he mentioned was um, industrial beauty limits restaurants to 100 seats, wants larger restaurants. Is anybody building 100 seats, even 100 seats anymore? Well, so 100 seats, just to give you a frame of reference, it could be a small Indian buffet restaurant, 2,400 square foot type of restaurant. It could be um, a Five Guys. How big is one ton grill? That's a 5,000, that's like 4,800 square feet, and that's gonna have 
going to have about 200 plus seats. So it's a, it's a different animal entirely. Mm -hmm. I can tell you honestly, right now, there's so many restaurants that are failing because they're just paying too much rent and they can't mm -hmm. get enough people to work there. It's like, I don't know, we're going to get new restaurants here. I call them daily. <laughs> That's what I do. There's so, no workers. So it's, it's one of these things where, you know, I don't know, a once larger restaurant um, in the uh, um, industrial B. Um, yeah, I don't think the rest. I don't think the restaurants seem as, as likely, you know, a scenario. But, 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 it doesn't, but, but doesn't that doesn't mean we couldn't, you know, yeah, make mean it that easier. We, right, you make it yeah, just in case. Yeah. So we could add another. So it's all in here. An accessory retail I mean, I would, use. I would definitely think about that in that particular area because it keeps Oops. all of the uses sort of close to 495. So a, they have a better chance of getting out larger succeeding, they will serve the um, Moss Park area. Mm -hmm. This is this is Lower right. Street, though. This is just yeah, but anything purple is IB. It just happens um, seven overlay. I'd like to just back up for a second. Industrial A and Industrial B. Um, so Industrial A and uh, from from historical reference. Industrial A looks like all, most of the South Street area, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Industrial B is the, the, the east side, so, some places on the east side of 495. It's, it's the yeah. Lumber Street. Yeah, the Lumber Street and then the, yeah. yes. what is that, um, across Lunder Street. Street. Yeah, okay. Historically, why were they set up as separate zones? Anybody recall? What, from A to B? Yeah, two and sides B. Because two at, at one point, and my recollection may be not entirely correct, but at one point when they sat down and looked at Hopkinton, 495 was kind of the splitter, mm -hmm. and we were okay with things happening on that side along South Street that we didn't necessarily want on this side of the road, which is not particularly fair to the make you know, the Maskinot people, like Maskinot but that people, was, right, because these guys came out in, you know, demanding all kinds of protection against EMC. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, importantly, the height of the buildings and how much light is over there is really critical. Um, over here on the IB area, um, same thing, different neighborhood. It was, what's, I can't read this one. That's Elm Street. Yeah, the Elm Street neighborhood over there. So that that neighborhood has a bunch of um, you know older residents who have been here who don't want to see you know a lot of light in their backyards either. So there's it's sensitive in that regard because then the overlay actually um, you can have higher buildings over here closer to 495 and not over here and not over here on South Street. This was the, the overlay, though, Industrial B in the Parkwood area is, was partly designed because the, right. the, the land slopes off yeah. so much that you can put a four-story building there and it's not as high as a you know, two-and-a-half-story building 100 feet further. further That's east. how we got the hotel overlay in that area. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Which makes complete sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so it doesn't sound like there's a, there's huge differences, but but it was just it was mostly to to keep this a little bit quieter, smaller buildings. Um, well, like I said today, In if B. you if you tried to put a four story building which is allowed on the east side of South Street on the west side of South Street, you're going to get a ton of pushback from the Aswadak people. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely, because it's just it's up on a hill, it's up higher. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. you, can, you can see it from everywhere. Well, you know, I, I, I'm over here, and I can see all the lights over there. And I shouldn't. <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay. but, but so, as far as what he's suggesting in terms of industrial B um, has been limited to 100 seats, I don't know why it was limited to 100 seats. That's before my time. But... It shouldn't necessarily be limited to 100 seats if you've got the appropriate parking. 
But then that's site plan review. You, you, you keep forgetting that. about site plan review. If they can't, if you they have guidelines, though, John, because no, we do have them. No, no, no. If, but if, if, as long as as you know, we, we can we can put this in there as, as long as they want to put something in. You know, if, if, um, Major's property right here. We, they had to make sure they had the, they had the parking and grant the people on keeping to it. You know, but um, you know, any, anything that you put in, we're still there's still going to be um, a site plan review before they can build it. So it's one spot, one parking spot for every three seats. seats. Yeah, we did that last year. For two three years. seats. Restaurant? Yeah. yeah. Was it two years ago? I think that was two years ago. What, what am I looking at the, uh, when, the when the 100 seat limit in Industrial B came to be. I, I, um, I'm intrigued by the retail use with manufacturing. I like that idea. Oh, how can we look at that? Yeah, that's just that, one, that one I'd like to talk about. I like that about. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so, I'd say like it's a rare, rare situation. It does seem like it's a rare situation, but it also seems like a like an opportunity that mm -hmm. perhaps a startup maybe that wants to you know just to see if it works. I don't know. And if you, is it a <coughs> really be a detriment if you've got manufacturing going on to have have a retail aspect to it? If no, you're they selling? they marry pretty well in a lot of ways in terms of how leases work and stuff like that. It's just again, it comes down to parking because a lot of the manufacturing industrial buildings don't have the same parking ratios for that retail requires or restaurants require. So don't we have that already though with, with the with Galaxy? What's Galaxy? The the um this the, the stone sales they do the uh, granite. Mm. I know that's why oh, I went. You know what? Um, I went I went there yeah, they, they they're the factory they, they're the factory that makes it. You know, and they do all the stone cutting there for sure, and, and then they also have a little, they have a little, little tiny store, which um, has plenty of parking. Is this in Granite? Is this in yeah, the Granite, right, right, right across from right 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 North Pond. Is it the library where the library used to be? No, it's uh, no, across, no, across, 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 across from Co. Across from Co. Right across the street from Co. Okay. They have, yeah. they have two big pieces of granite right in right in front. Right on South Street. Okay. Okay. So now you're gonna see it. Like, oh, no, look at that. But, they, but that's good. <laughs> no, but no they, the only time they, I ever went down there was when the library was there, and I thought it was right next to the library. Huh. Talking about. It is where on the, the same side as where the, where the library was temporary. It was. Mm -hmm. It was next. It was just to the south. Okay. Oh. Okay. 2012 was when that provision went in, and then it was amended again in 2017. So I'm looking up to see. Oh yeah, because we touched everything last year, uh, two years ago. <laughs> Really? <laughs> with that, uh, with the um, restaurant. So when she's saying 2017, it's really in 2016 that we were talking about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so for the agenda for next time, um, off of Scott's list, the vocational educational schools yes. we can discuss, mm -hmm. and the indoor rec use. And I realize there there may be some unintended consequences there that we need to discuss. Mm -hmm. Um, the retail square footage limits. Two we can five. we can talk about that. None of these mean we have to go forward. With them, so. uh, definitely accessory retail use. Yes. Yes. And the restaurants. Again, we may we may find that we have to continue that discussion if there needs to be mm -hmm. you know, more information. Excellent. But. Um, yeah, my, my, my feeling about the clubs, theaters, and halls, it's, it's much more complicated. <laughs> well, I think a lot, there's, there's a lot of residential and, and business districts as well. So if you live on, say, Walcott Street, somebody could open up a nightclub next to you. Yeah. So, yeah. That's um, not good. I, I, I like the idea of the special permit requirement being part of that plan if somebody was to, um, you know, have entertainment on their property. Yeah. But, but then again, if I may, nightclubs have to be open at night, and I don't think anything's open up then after well, 9, 9.30 anyway. You'd be surprised. <laughs> so, we, we, at least not when we get to the hours of business <laughs> operation. Yeah. We'd, be, we'd be the only day club. <laughs> okay. So, are we agreed that we'll start with solar farms and mm -hmm. next time, and we'll go through the Scott Richardson business list <laughs> from Chamber of Commerce? <laughs> next time yeah, and great. hopefully get a bunch to send on to planning board mm -hmm. and then we can settle into our long-term items. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Yeah, that's a good way to And then I'll get, I'll get guidelines in the meantime on the three that, that I noted, stone walls, sidewalk, paper streets, oh, good um, from planning board. And you're going to get guidance uh, right. on mobile vendors from, right. yeah. But that's the only one, right? It's just the mobile vendors. Oh, yeah, mobile vendors, yes, mobile vendors. All right, good. Um, the calendar. Oh, wait. Um, so did the everyone have a chance to review the minutes from last time? Mm -hmm. Nicely done minutes. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to um, uh, accept the minutes as written. Second. Discussion? Discussion? For some reason, Mary got all of her hyphens, and I didn't get all of mine. So my <laughs> name is misspelled <laughs> twice. <laughs> In the members' presence, I deserve a hyphen between the R and the capital H. And in reorganization, second to last line, I deserve a hyphen between the R and the capital H. <laughs> well done. Short change. Mary didn't lose any of her hyphens. I didn't. I'm running for chair next That's time. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine has gotten used to my name. <laughs> Oh, you got one down here, though. No, no. Yeah, you got there. one. You got some one. of my oh, hyphens came through. <laughs> okay, any other discussion? All in favor of accepting with those amendments? <laughs> Say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Minutes approved. Um, so we, we're back again. What, December 10? Yeah, there you go. Let's, yeah, let's look at it. Let's look at Second meeting in December, if it was possible. If it, it was possible, like that's right. There was some scheduling issues. Okay, so the, the tenth was our possibility. That still works for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone who's yes. here, good. Seven o'clock on the tenth. The seventeenth is a planning board meeting, right? Twenty-fourth, mm -hmm. not good. I'm yes. assuming. Not as good. <laughs> there, there are better ones. Does anyone have a proposal for a different day of the week? Thursday the 20th. Thursday the 20th. I can do that. I can do that. Is anyone on school committee? That's a school committee meeting. That's good. Okay. Wow. Everyone can do it? I, I can be here till. I can be here for about half the meeting. Like till eight? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eight thirty. I better look maybe. myself. <laughs> that's in. Maybe the whole meeting. Sounds like that's in. That's a good. All right. Thursday the tw twelve twenty. At seven p seven p.m. Yep, seven p.m. The school board doesn't meet here, do they? No. Okay. Oh no, I'm, I'm good. Okay, so we're gonna put uh, seven on. Okay. Good. Does that work for you, HQ? <laughs> okay. I'm sure someone will be here. That's great. Appreciate everyone's flexibility. And in January, um, we should hopefully get on a regular schedule. If planning board is on a regular schedule, then we'll be able to alternate with them. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, do they meet? I don't even have that in my hair. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's on the seventh. Yep, so they meet on January 7th, so we'll meet on the 14th. So it'll be... So we're not meeting on the 7th? No, nope, that's a planning board meeting. No, other way around. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. so the 14th is planning board, the 7th is... The 14th is planning board? I have oh, it wrong? In January yeah. you're talking for. Okay. I'm okay. not No, January, Thursday. yeah. So we are, it will be Zach on the 7th. Yes. Be Zach on the seventh of, on the 7th of January. I somehow I have that wrong in my calendar for planning board. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. I'll exactly. fix so that. Good. Okay, good. Cool. Well, I'll make a motion to adjourn then. Do the chair. Second. Can I second? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what the rules no, are. No, you can, no, but. <laughs> Anyone second? All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Do we need Aye. discussion about a journey? <laughs> Any opposed? Any abstentions?